Okay, Cougars, we are back again for video number two. And video number two is to walk you through how to complete your research plan. Um, so you've, at this point, you've already picked your topic, you've gotten it approved by your teacher, and now you need to do the research plan. And the research plan is going to take you the longest amount of time. And that that makes sense, right? Because you want to have all of your procedures and plans in place before you start your project to save yourself from making some mistakes and having to start over. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to do the research plan and keep in mind that you can have your research plan open on your computer while this video is playing and you can pause the video at the end of each page to make sure that you're like you're filling it out as I'm explaining how to do it so that it's like you have somebody sitting right there walking you through line by line how to do this plan. Um, the really important thing that I want to mention before we get started is that it is critical that this plan is filled out correctly. That um, you don't take shortcuts and that you fill in every line the way it's supposed to be because what happens is you're going to submit this plan to your teacher and your teacher's going to check it over and they're going to tell you you're good to go on your project or they're going to tell you no you have to go back and fix you know xyz um and so that is going to take you longer but your teachers are human and they have dozens of these plans to go through. So it is possible that they could miss something. And then your project goes to the school fair and let's say your project wins. Fabulous. Now I'm gonna get your research plan and I'm gonna go through it with a fine tooth comb, line by line. And if there's something that is incorrect or something that wasn't filled out properly or the dates don't match up, then I have to disqualify your project and that breaks my heart. Um, but the dates matter and the signatures matter. And if they're not, um, if the dates don't line up, for example, if you started your project prior to um, certain forms on this research plan being signed, your project has to get disqualified. And there's no way that I can fix that. So I don't want that to happen. So please make sure that you follow this video and you follow each page and you make sure that it is all filled out correctly. Um, and don't forget there's after school help to help you. However, if you come to after school help and you tell me, I need help doing my research plan, my first question is gonna be, did you watch the video? Because everything that I'm gonna do for you in person, I'm gonna do right here in this video. We are gonna go page by page, line by line. All right, so let's get started. So we're looking at your research plan and this is what you're gonna get emailed to you from your teacher. And the first page is just basic information, right? What is your name, um, your teacher's name? I'll put your school name in here so that will be in here when you get it. Um, grade, gender, ethnicity, project title, category. Don't worry if you're unsure of the category, but put something in there. Don't leave it blank. Your school coordinator is already filled out. That's going to be me. And the second page, you can skip this page. I will take care of this page um, at the time when your project wins and I'm going through and looking for everything that's supposed to be there. So you can skip page two. Page number three, this page is really important. You're going to put your name up here. You're going to put your project title. All of these other things that have little X's and check marks, please leave it the way it is. Don't change anything on here. Um, if something on here needs to be changed, I will take care of it. But leave the form the way it is as of now. When you scroll to the bottom, you're going to see some things highlighted in purple right here. We're going to come back to this at, at the end. So for right now, you can just um, fill out the top here. 
and then leave the rest of it blank. Uh, slide number four. All right. So I've pre-filled in some things here to make to make life a little bit easier. So you're going to put your name, again, your grade, your school email address, a phone number that I can reach you on. Whether that's your own cell or your parents' cell, that's up to you. Team members here are going to be left blank unless you have special permission from your teacher in order to work in a group. Um, and those projects are far and few between. The title of your project. The title of your project has to match the same on every single one of these forms. So, for example, if I'm doing uh, hydroponic farming, I can't put hydroponic plants on one and then hydroponic farming on the other and then hydroponic flowers on the next line. They, it all has to match. Your school and address and phone number is already filled out. See, again, we have some highlighted purple here. Again, we're going to come back to that. Don't worry about that. All of these check marks and all of this information, you're going to leave blank. It's already pre-filled out for you, so you don't have to do anything there. Um, the rest of this page is, is good. You don't have to do anything. Pretty easy so far, right? Okay, the next page, next slide. Um, this is where your actual research plan begins. So again, student name, grade, teacher, your rationale. Um, why is this research important? This is going to be your background information. And it's basically a brief uh, background or summary about what makes your project matter. What makes it important? Why should I even bother to look at this project? Um, so you're going to give me some background information. If you are doing a project, you should have some background knowledge about this project. So I'm going to very quickly jump over to Science Buddies because that's where um, I got my project from. So I'm going to switch tabs here. And if I click on background, look at that it gives me my background rationale. It gives me my information. So hopefully, and if you haven't by this point, you should read this because this is, this is your, your foundational information for what really your project is about. So you're going to read this um, and you're going to take this information and you are going to put it in your own words. Um, in the past, I have allowed students to copy and paste this. Um, we're not allowing that anymore because it, it it's just not, it's, it really defeats the purpose if you're just copy and pasting it. So you should read this, summarize it, put it into your own words, and then you're going to put that right here where it says rationale okay um and then based on that that summary or that that information what is the question or the problem that you are trying to solve using the scientific method right so we have make observations ask a question right um state the problem so this is this would be that step in the scientific method state the problem or the question what are you trying to solve now if you're not doing an experiment and you're doing an engineering project it, it kind of it's kind of going to work the same way right what what is it you're trying to accomplish what are you what's the problem that you noticed which caused you to now engineer this this thing right? This thing that you're, you're making. That's going to go here. Um, in the next box, it says engineering goal or hypothesis. If you are doing an engineering project, you're not going to have a hypothesis. You're going to have an engineering end goal. What exactly is it 
you are trying to build, what is its function going to be? If you're doing an experiment, you're going to have a hypothesis and your hypothesis needs to be in an if then statement where you're taking your prediction and you're turning it into a statement with a measurable outcome where the if part is the independent variable. What are you testing? The then part is the dependent variable, your prediction and what you're measuring. Be specific. You, you know, at this point you can't say, I think if I test flower A and flower B and I use X fertilizer, flower A will probably grow more. That's not, that's not a good hypothesis because it doesn't give me details, right? So a better hypothesis would be if I test two flowers using fertilizer X on flower A, then flower A will grow six more inches than flower B. That is a measurable outcome, right? It's a measurable prediction. That's what I'm looking for. Um, the next part is the materials, materials and tools. So if you're getting your project from science buddies and you come over here, it's going to give you a materials list, right? And a lot of kids will just copy this and paste it into their research plan. And that's okay. You can do that really simple copy and paste, right? But there's a difference between materials and tools, and you have to separate them. So you can go to that website and you can copy that list and you can paste it right here, but you have to separate the materials from the tools. What's the difference? Materials are things that you're going to use in the course of your project that you're not going to be able to use again. They're gonna get used up. Tools are things that you're gonna use that you could use again after the project. So for example, uh, permanent marker, scissors, these two here, scissors, utility knife, permanent marker. Those are tools. You're going to use them for your project, but they're more than likely going to be able to be used again, right? Uh, purified or filtered bottled water, plant nutrients, those things are probably going to get used up during the experiment. So those are materials. You have to separate them. All right, next box. Uh, okay. Your procedures, and this is going to be really simple, especially if you got your project from Science Buddies because you can just copy and paste. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to go to your procedure. You're going to click on it. You are going to copy all of your procedures step by step and you're going to paste over here. Please leave out the pictures. I don't need the pictures and they, the pictures make the research plan really, really long. You may want to print out the pictures for yourself or have it available so that you can have a visual of what you're doing, but I don't need them on the research plan. Um, the procedure list should be step-by-step, step, you know, number one, two, three, four. Um, and it should be a comprehensive list from prepping to cleanup all the way through. If you didn't get your project from Science Buddies, that's okay. Um, but that means that you need to come up with the procedures list yourself and you can't, you have to make sure that you're stating every single procedure so that another scientist could come along, look at your procedures list, copy it identic identical to how you did it, right? And get similar results. Remember that's called replication right? Another person coming along and copying your procedures. So your procedures have to be in such a way 
that a complete stranger could follow that list and get the same outcome, okay? The next box. All right, so this is your risk assessment. And the thing that I have kids tell me all the time is there's no risk. There's always a risk. I don't care what your engineering, what your experiment is, there's always some sort of risk. So you cannot leave this blank, okay? So describe risk assessment process and results. What it's asking for here is for you to tell me how you analyzed the risk. What did you do to assess the risk that was involved? Maybe you did background information. Maybe the website where you got this, this project idea gave you the risks. Maybe um, you spoke to your parent or the person that you live with and ask them. Um, and then what risks did you find? You're gonna list those here. The second box, detail chemical concentrations and drug dosages. This is the only one that you could potentially um, not have to do. However, you can't just leave it blank. What you can do is type N forward slash A non-applicable, meaning that you're not using chemicals. You're not using any sort of um, any sort of pharmaceuticals. So if you are using any chemical that you cannot find in the grocery store, it needs to be listed here, okay? Next box, describe safety precautions and procedures to minimize risk. Okay, so in the first box, you told me what your risks were. Now I want you to tell me what you're gonna do to minimize those risks. What precautions are you taking? For example, if you're working with a, some sort of chemical, you're gonna use gloves. If you're working with um, some sort of tool, a knife, a, a hammer, a saw, what, how are you gonna make sure that you're using this safely? What are you gonna do to minimize some of that risk? Now, again, I wanna reiterate that there are kids who will leave this blank and say, there is no risk. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm growing plants. There isn't a risk to me. There is some risk. I promise you, it may be very small. It may seem silly to you, but there is always some sort of risk. Okay. Um, for example, certain plants are toxic to your pets. If your pet eats this plant, it may be toxic to your pet, right? It could be something as simple as that. It may not be a risk to you directly. So you really have to consider that. Then here, discuss methods of disposal. So there are most things you can throw away in your household garbage, and that's fine. You're going to put that down on this form. Throw away in household garbage, no problem. Um, there are some things that you cannot put down your kitchen sink. You have to have a different way of disposing of it, or you can't just throw it away in the garbage, right? So you have to think about this ahead of time. Um, where are you going to dispose of these things? How are you going to safely dispose of them? And you're going to put that in this box. Box can't be left blank. I had a student one year who was doing um, his experiment using earthworms. And so he told me at the end, you know, I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to throw that away in my household garbage. And my question was, what are you doing with these earthworms when you're done? Like you can't throw them away. I hope you're not going to throw them away, right? What are you going to do with them? Oh, well, I'm going to put them back in the yard. Well, are you going to put them back where you got them from? Or are you going to put them, you know, somewhere else? Like, you know, where are you getting them from? Where are you putting them back? So you have to think about that. You have to be specific about how you're disposing of your materials. Okay. Data analysis. So this is important because sometimes 
we set up an experiment and we don't think about how we're going to get the data that we're looking for. And we realize that maybe our experiment was a little bit flawed because if you think about how you're going to analyze the data, it helps you to plan the experiment itself. So I want to know exactly what you are going to do to measure the outcome, to measure your dependent variable. How are you measuring this? If you are doing an engineering project, how are you going to test your product or your design to see that it actually functions the way that it's intended to? How are you getting that information? Um, if you got your project from Science Buddies, sometimes, most of the time, they're going to give you a data table. See how the data table is here? Um, you can, whoop, sorry, you can copy and paste this data table. Copy it from here, paste it onto your research plan. Um, or you can use, because some of them will copy and paste and some of them will not. You can use the snipping tool. And you're just going to type in snipping tool. Um, you're going to click on new. And you're just going to take like a, a screenshot of your data table. And you're going to save it as an image and then I'm just going to put it here on my desktop. And I know this is not showing you, um, but you can use the snipping tool and then you can just insert it as an image over here. So if I click insert image upload, and I'm going to do um, here. And you're going to have to kind of play with it and move it around um, to make it fit. Oh. So here. I need to make it smaller. Um, something to that effect. Just so that I know that you have a plan. You have a plan for how you're going to analyze this data. Okay. Uh, get rid of it so that this doesn't show up on your copy. Okay. If at any point you need more space, you need more room, all you have to do is click, right click here, uh, new slide, and it's going to give you a blank slide, and you can put whatever you want in there. Okay, you can add in an image, you can add in your data table. Um, so I could put my data table here. And then I could make it larger so that I could actually see it, right? So if you need more space, you're running out of room, you're just going to insert a new slide, okay? All right, let me back. All right. The next page is your sources. Sources are extremely important. If you do not have sources, I cannot accept your project because you're using all of this information from other websites, from other people. You need to cite those sources so that you're not claiming it as your own work. So. I put in a couple sources for you. I strongly suggest that you look, at least look at these sources. So we have the Palm Beach um, Science and Engineering Rules, the, the rule book for Palm Beach County. Then we have the Florida uh, State Science Fair rule book. And then we have the International Science Fair rule book. I've already put those links in there for you. You need at least five other sources. This sounds a lot harder than it is. If you got your um, 
project from science from from the website you're going to come over here and you're going to go to your project page you're going to go to summary and most of them if you scroll down your first um your first source is going to be this website the website itself <clears throat> and so you're just gonna um cite this website right and you're gonna put the date that you accessed it and then it's gonna give you um some more citations so here all you gotta do is copy and paste so i'm gonna copy here and then i'm gonna come over here is source one perfect right now i'm going to come over and because i got my background information from here there are citations at the bottom i need to cite this information oops sorry i didn't realize it wasn't showing so i'm going to click on background and i'm going to scroll to the bottom and i used this information right in my in the first form for my rationale for my background so i need to cite this so we're going to scroll down look here are three citations right copy the first one paste it here make it neat and i'm going to go over i'm going to do the second one copy Paste. And I'm going to come back to the third one. Copy. Paste here. Now it gives me, um, other reading materials so based on this on this rationale information gives me other sources of information to look at so i'm going to click here and i am going to click here it's going to take me to a news article that is relevant to my project it's going to give me some background information for my project. I'm going to read this and then I can use this as a source, right? So copy, paste here. Now I have my five sources. Okay. The last source is, I'm sorry, the second to last source, um, the data sheets for chemicals used. The the source is already here. When you click on this, and this only pertains if you're using chemicals that you cannot use in a that you cannot buy in a grocery store. Um, this website is going to give you if you just put the chemical name in here, it's going to give you a data sheet, a safety data sheet. It's going to tell you how this chemical can be stored, what it cannot be stored with. Um, any you know any possible um any possible things to be aware of like certain chemicals are known carcinogens right they can cause cancer with long-term use over periods of time um ways that it can be disposed or how it cannot be disposed so if you have a chemical in your project that you cannot buy at your grocery store you should have looked it up here and then you're going to cite the data sheet. You're going to add the data sheet here so that I know that you looked at it. Okay. And then your safety reference. Now, your safety reference, depending on what you're doing, might come from a few different places. If you are using Science Buddies website, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back to my project and I am going to look for 
Um, summary. Here is some safety tips. Right? It tells you to have adult supervision, and it tells you to wear gloves. I can use this as a safety source. If you are using uh, tools, you can look up the Home Depot website or Lowe's, and they will have an entire section of their website devoted to safety with tools. You can also look up, you know, depending on what you're doing, um, you can look up the safety information online, but you have to put the reference. I have to know when there's a reference there, that tells me that you were aware of the risk and that you took a step in order to look at some safety precautions, right? That's important. So make sure that is there. Um, next box. All right. So here, where it is highlighted in blue, you're going to type your name. Then you're going to type your name again. I know it says signature, but you're going to type your name, and it will translate it to a signature, okay? And then you're going to put the date that you did this. The date matters. The date that you're filling out this research plan is the date that you want to put in here. We're going to skip all of the rest of this for just a minute. Um, we'll come back to it. Scroll down to the next page. This one says risk assessment form. You're going to put your student name, the title of your project. Now, it says here, all questions must be answered. You cannot leave it blank. So. List all hazardous chemicals, activities, and devices to be used. Wait a minute. We already did this, right? We already did this on a previous form. Yes, we did. It's, it's, a, it's a secondary form, and the reason that there are two almost identical forms is because they are used for two separate things. So all of your paperwork is in a, a nice, neat packet here, but at some point that paperwork is going to get split up, and it's going to go to different departments. So that's why there are two very similar forms. But the good news is you can go back and copy and paste. So right here, it wants a list of it wants a list of risks, right? So you're going to come back here to uh, slide number seven, and whatever you put here, you're going to copy. You know, let's say I'm using um, using a knife will have parent supervision, right? So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to come back down to my risk assessment form, the formal risk assessment form, and I'm going to put copy and paste. I don't have to type it again, right? I just... Put it in there. List microorganisms exempt from pre-approval that will be used. More than likely, you are going to leave this as N forward slash A, non-applicable. If you do have something to list here, you're going to have worked with me one-on-one -on -one to fill this out, so don't worry about that. Um, list all hazardous chemicals, activities, and devices. Again, any chemical that you are using that you cannot buy at Publix needs to be listed here. Any tools that could potentially cause you a trip to the emergency room, you're going to put them here, okay? Uh, safety precautions and procedures that will be used to reduce the risk. We already did this. You're going to go back to slide number seven. See where it says here? Describe safety precautions. Whatever you put here, you're going to copy and you're going to paste on your formal risk assessment. Copy and paste here. Disposal procedures. Again, you're going to go back to slide number seven. And I put that I will dispose of in my household. 
garbage. Okay. Copy. Risk assessment three. Paste here. Right, so all I'm doing is copy and pasting, copy and pasting. Now, it's asking for a source of safety information. I already have that on my sources page, right? And that was slide number eight. So I'm going to go back here. Whatever my safety reference was right here, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here. So even though there's two forms, you've already done the work on one form. All you're doing is copy and pasting on the second form. Okay, now down at the bottom, it's highlighted in purple. I told you we'll go back to those at the end. So we're gonna skip that for now. The next slide says to stop. You are done at this point. All done, ready to go, right? Except there's one more thing you have to do. We're gonna go back and we're gonna deal with everything that's highlighted in purple right now. So at this point, all of these slides should be filled out except for the places I told you to leave blank and the places that are highlighted in purple. And I'm going to explain that right now. Once you're done filling everything out, you are going to click on share. You are going to type in your parents' email address. And I cannot spell today. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, parents at gmail.com. And you're going to click on done. What that's going to do is it's going to send this copy to your parents' email address. Now, before I explain why, if you're sitting there saying, Miss Kennedy, my mom doesn't have a Gmail address. She has a Yahoo address, or she has an AT&T.net, or an iCloud, or whatever. Not a problem. Make your mom a Gmail account. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It takes like 10 minutes. Make mom a Gmail account. Set it up for her. Open it up for her, and help her out. The reason why is because when your mom or dad or grandma or whoever is at home and is helping you out with this, when they open this up through their Gmail account, it's going to register that they are logged in to the research plan. And you're going to have them go through. You're going to sit with them and you're going to help them do it because they're not going to know what they're doing at first, right? You're going to go through and on every document, you are going to look for those places that are highlighted in purple. And you're going to have them type their name. Where it says signature, type their name. They're going to put the date that they're doing this. They're going to put their phone number and they're going to put their Gmail account. Then you're going to go to the next form and you're going to look for where it's highlighted in purple. You're going to do the same thing. Your parent is typing their name as the adult sponsor. And that is because they are saying, I'm aware my kid is doing this project. I'm okay with it. I'm going to supervise them. Because if you're doing a project, if you're doing a science project in their house, I need to know that they know you're doing this and they're going to supervise you, right? So the reason why they need to sign into their own Gmail account, they can't just come over to your computer and type on the document you're working on. They have to open this under their own Gmail account that's in their name because that way I know that they actually did see the project. If they don't sign in under their name, there is this thing here where it says uh, file. And then it says version history. And then it says see version history. When I do that, it's going to show me every user that opened up this document. If your parent's name is not there, or it's there, but it doesn't match the date on the document, your project cannot win at the school fair and it cannot advance. 
because when it gets there, they are going to check and they're going to disqualify it if your parent's name is not there. So it's really, really important when I am pulling the winners and I don't judge them. Someone else judges them, gives me the winners. The first thing I do is I, I contact the teacher and I get the research plan. And the first thing I do is look at the version history. Is the, did the parent ever look at this research plan? If they did not, I have to disqualify it. So you're going to go in, you're going to click on share. You're going to type your parents' Gmail address. You're going to go through this research plan with them and you are going to have them type their name and sign every single box that is highlighted in purple. Okay. You're signing where it's highlighted in blue, but you should have already done that before you sent it to them. Excuse my helper in the background. I'm sorry. She, she really likes science and I just, I can't make her get down because she just comes right back up. Um, so your parent has to sign everywhere that's highlighted in purple. Then once they're done with that, you are going to click on share and you're going to type in your teacher's name and you're going to email this to your teacher. And then your teacher's going to grade it and they're going to say, oh, it's wonderful. And everything's going to be great. Okay. Your teacher should respond to you with one of two things. One, approved, begin your project. Two, go back in and adjust X, Y, Z. If you're my student, I'm going to put little comments here. Um, for example, if mom didn't sign, I'm going to highlight here and I'm going to put, um, no, nope, that's not. No, 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 no. I'm going to highlight. Oh, now I'm moving things. Okay. I'm going to highlight here and I'm going to put a comment box and I'm going to type mom did not sign or, you know, whatever it is. And then I'm going to email you back and say, see comments. Those are the things that you need to fix. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Feel free to drop in for um, virtual after school help or in person after school help, depending on where we are at that time. Um, but there is help available. You are not on your own. You can replay this video over and over again. And like I said, um, you can you can pause it and fill in this research plan as you're doing it. The last thing that I want to mention that's really, really important is this. You cannot start your project until your parent has signed this form. Okay. If you go to, there's a place on here where it asks you the start date. Okay. Here highlighted in yellow. It asks you what day you are starting your experiment and what day you plan to end your experiment. If you put, I'm starting my experiment on September 5th and I go in here to the file version history and let's say you do your experiment and it's great, but now you win and I get your research plan and I go in here to the version history and I look at the version history and I see that mom did not sign this document until September 15th. You said you started on September 5th and your project was done by September 10th, but mom didn't sign till the 15th. So that means that you did your project and mom knew nothing about it until after it was done. That's not okay. When I send that to the regional fair and their judges go look at it, they're going to disqualify your project. So I can't in good faith send your project to the regional fair because that's taking up a space from somebody who could potentially win when I know that because the dates are off, there's no way that you could advance. So it's, it's, it's more probable that I'm going to disqualify it before it gets there rather than get it there and then let them disqualify it and lose a spot. So it's really, really important that everything is signed 
before you start your experiment, okay? Again, if there are any questions, there's after school assistance, email me, email your teacher. Here's to happy researching. I'm sure you're all gonna do fabulous and I cannot wait to see your projects.